Mr. Speaker, I'm pretty sure we haven't had a carjacking in my congressional district in several years. Uh, if someone thought about carjacking uh, a vehicle in my district, probably wouldn't end well for them. If you Google uh, carjacking in Kentucky, what will come up is just a few months ago, two people were carjacked in different incidents uh, at gunpoint in Louisville, which I think is in the state of Kentucky. And since we're talking about state laws, that's what should be relevant. So carjacking is obviously a problem across the country. Um, the, the conceit of the other side seems to be that they care more about crime and public safety in Washington, D.C. than people who live in Washington, D.C. Republicans campaign against crime, but more specifically, they run against urban people. Representative Jamie Raskin, working for you, by the way, as he battles cancer, points to the Republicans and Fox News hosts that love to show protests against police violence in urban areas. It's because the same DAs and the same type of Democrat mayors are making the same kind of defund the police moves and bail reforms, which are letting the gangsters and the criminals out of jail to commit repeat offenses. And then talk about crime in those hush tones with phrases like those people and gangs and thugs. But as Raskin points out here, crime is not just a problem for urban areas. The type of crime that scares Republican and independent voters the most to make them believe that crime is skyrocketing, that America is a hellhole. And the thing is, it works. And it works even better when you have your very own propaganda cable channel running stuff like this all day, every day. Dystopian, nakedly racist video, preferably grainy security cam footage featuring almost exclusively black people committing crime in big cities. It is like a hellscape on an endless loop. If you are a viewer of Fox News, at this point you just accept as fact that, for example, the entire city of Portland, Oregon has been burned to the ground. It's gone, nothing left. And that every other big city in this country is a post-apocalyptic inferno. Red states like Kentucky battle crime as well, whether it's the leftover remains of the opioid wars and the hillbilly heroin, or simply criminals who are not African-American or Hispanic, they have similar issues. I don't know if you picked up on the part where Comer said, If someone thought about carjacking uh, a vehicle in my district, probably wouldn't end well for them. That's dangerous Second Amendment rhetoric. See, Comer is implying that open gun laws in his state, as many Republicans do, make their state safer and would decrease crime. But as Raskin illustrates, that just ain't so. In fact, if you're getting carjacked, every law enforcement official who can speak in a complete sentence will tell you this, let them have the car. Don't fight for it because they're criminals and maybe you're a housewife with a Glock in your purse, but your pulse is 170 beats per minute. And if you pull that gun out, your odds of staying alive are right up there with winning the Powerball. But Republicans aren't just making this crap up about Kentucky. The national chorus is that pro-gun red cities are safer than democratically run sanctuary cities in blue states. But the truth, as usual, is a bit more complicated. And then he joins um, uh, the chorus denouncing crime in Washington, D.C., which is suddenly of concern to them. I had not heard them mention that before. Well, it turns out that Bakersfield, California, has one of the highest crime rates in America, recently described as one of the top 10 deadliest cities in America for its size, and its crime rate is higher than that of Washington, D.C. Bakersfield, California, right up the road from me, is one of America's most deadly cities with a mean income of less than $50,000 and unemployment over 8%. And who is their congressman? Oh yeah, the GOP speaker, Kevin McCarthy. To have old white men attacking DC and implying these people cannot be trusted to have representation, well, you have to ask yourself, could it be because DC is a city with an overwhelming African-American population? I mean, Bakersfield can elect members of Congress and the people there have voting rights, but DC? We're gonna take this opportunity to kick around the people of Washington, DC. Why? Because they're vulnerable because they don't have voting representation in the House and they have no voting representation or voice in the U.S. Senate. That's a scandal from the standpoint of democracy. But instead of trying to solve that problem, my colleagues instead want to use the people of Washington, D.C. as a whipping post, as a pinata, something to kick around. And I just think that that's outrageous and it's wrong. You know, on January 6th, when we were attacked at the Capitol and in this chamber, there were hundreds of residents of Washington, D.C. who worked for the Capitol Police, who worked for the Metropolitan Police Department, who worked for other police forces, who came here to defend us. They came to defend the Congress that they are excluded from.
And Raskin is right. Over the years, Republicans have refused to consider representation for D.C. and have used the tired old code words to keep the residents down. North Dakota, for example, has the same population as D.C., but as a congressman and two U.S. senators. It also happens to be 86 percent white. And guess what? They have crime as well. So the question is, why are Republicans allowed to lie with impunity about America's crime problems, laying them at the feet of Democrats and people of color? It, the distinguished gentleman uh, from Georgia uh, invoked a couple of crimes in Washington, D.C., including one in the metro. He didn't talk about the hundreds of crimes that were committed here at the Capitol, in Congress, in Washington, D.C., uh, because he viewed the events of January 6th as akin to a, quote, normal tourist visit. And now he dares to lecture the people of Washington, D.C. about keeping Washington, D.C. safe. He seeks to associate Washington, D.C., with crime. And indeed, he and his colleagues constantly try to link images of crime to what they call Democrat-controlled cities. So I did some research last night just to clarify matters. The seven states with the highest murder rates in 2020 all were states that were majority for Donald Trump in the 2020 election. The murder rate in the states that voted for Trump was higher in aggregate than the murder rate in the states that voted for Biden in each year from 2000 to 2020. So I would invite the gentleman not to lecture the people of Washington, D.C. about crime rates. Boom. Raskin nails the hypocrisy of the right. And it's not a small point. American cities have enacted strict gun laws, but Republican-controlled states act like the wild, wild west, even as America averages more than one mass shooting a day by allowing the uneducated and uninformed to carry around AR-15s into bars, nightclubs, even high school sporting events. The culture of violence in this country is backed by the hundreds of millions of guns in the hands of the angry and isolated citizens who are lied to by the Trump acolytes. Hillary wants to abolish, essentially abolish, the Second Amendment. By the way, and if she gets to pick, if she gets to pick her judges, nothing you can do, folks. Although the Second Amendment people, maybe there is, I don't know. Who actually believe we are coming for their guns. That's not true. We are, however, coming for the truth. So the millions of people living in red states understand that random violence and mass shootings are in their backyards, and that cities like, and especially Washington, D.C., are not the problem. But to be fair, Americans in red states are like Americans in blue states, victims of the GOP lies, hypocrisy, and racism that didn't begin in 2016, but surfaced and shows few signs of going away. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe and follow us on YouTube at Really American.